tonight, the Wolverines of Utah Valley looking to hang on to first place by their fingernails in the Western Athletic Conference as they entertain the Vandals from the University of Idaho. It's coming up next right here on UVU TV. Welcome to Orem, Utah, the UCCU Center on the campus of Utah Valley University, where tonight the Wolverines of UVU looking to bounce back from a very disappointing loss. Wolverines still leading the whack, though, at 8-2. and two. They're hosting the Vandals of Idaho, who come in here 4-7. and seven. Hello again, everybody. Jim McCullough along with Matt Peterson. Oh, my goodness, Matt. What has was a two-game lead for the Wolverines in the Western Athletic Conference, now down to just half a game. What did we say before last game on Thursday night? When you're the number one team, you have every single team that you play coming for you. And so the Wolverines uh, are going to learn to play w with that type of mentality from every opponent. Uh, as we see, they're still sitting atop the whack. Barely. With an 8-2 and two record, just half a game ahead of New Mexico State. And New Mexico State has already beaten Utah Valley. So if those two were to end up in a tie, New Mexico State would have the tiebreaker. Uh, Grand Canyon not eligible for postseason play. Idaho, though, one of those teams that uh, could play a big spoiler role in the regular season and a very dangerous team for the postseason. Yeah, you know, it's a quick turnaround from Thursday night. Yeah. Luckily, they've played before, so the Wolverines have an idea of preparation for them. But, yeah, Idaho's going to come in here. They're going to play with a lot of energy. It'll be very vital for the Wolverines to match that. And let's see how they respond. It's yeah. very unusual for the Wolverines to lose at home. So let's see how, as a team, they respond from the loss on Thursday night. 15-point disappointing loss on Thursday night against Seattle. All right. Wolverines have already beaten Idaho once this season at their place. A fairly close game, five points. So key players for the Wolverines to do it again tonight. Yeah, we're going to start with... Mitch Bruniel, you know, he's a forward for the Wolverines. He guards a lot of different positions. In that first game at Idaho, when the Wolverines came away with the victory, he did score 18 points. And then we've got Hayes Garrity. He scored 14 points in a win at Idaho. So, you know, if I'm those two players, I'm looking at it saying, hey, the last time we played these, this team, we had a lot of success. Let's try and match that. Meanwhile, for Idaho, they've got one main go-to guy, but there's always got to be somebody helping out a go-to guy. Yeah, Stephen Madison is the go-to guy. He averages 18.3 points per game, which is second in the WAC. He's their do-it-all. We're going to talk a lot about him in this game. And then you've got Connor Hill, who is averaging a little over 13.5 points per game, and he's a great outside shooter. He 63 three-point shots this season that he has made. So... He's going to be a threat from shooting the ball outside. Wolverines have lost two of their last three games. They've only lost two games here at home out of 11, though. So if they're going to win this thing, keys to victory, Matt. Well, I think the, the number one key is they've got to be able to keep Madison in check. They cannot allow him to go off. He's going to do so much for the Vandals. So first of all is you got to keep him in check. Second of all is they've got to rebound from all positions. You know, a lot of times it's the idea that just the big guys are rebounding, yeah. but they've got to have rebounding from every position. Their guards have to rebound down and defending the perimeter. You know, Madison is inside, but the Vandals have a lot of good perimeter players. Our key players, Mitch Bruniel and Hayes Garrity, our perimeter players, they're going to play a key role in defending that perimeter to stop the Vandals tonight. This one should be a lot of fun. It might just turn out to be a lot closer than some people think. We're going to take a break here on our Costa Vida pregame show. When we get back, starting lineups and your opening tip coming your way next on UVU TV.
brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Our country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Starting lineups, first of all, for the Idaho Vandals. They're going to start Connor Hill, Mike Scott, Birasek, Stephen Madison, and Joe Kammerer. Connor Hill, a guard, six foot three, junior from Post Falls, Idaho, averaging 13.6. Mike Scott averaging 8.2. He'll be playing point guard, six foot junior from LA. Birasek at forward, a six six junior from Senegal, averaging five points a game. Stephen Madison's are all everything. Leading scorer, leading rebounder, leads the team in steals and blocks and assists. Only player in Division I basketball leading his team in five different categories. Wax, second leading scorer at 18.3 a game. He's a forward, 6'6", senior from Portland, Oregon. And then Joe Kammerer starts at center, 6'9", senior from Eugene, Oregon. As soon as they take care of a little uh, dance team action here, we'll get the starting lineups for Utah Valley to you. Idaho comes in here averaging 70 points a game, giving up 73 points a game, coached by Don Verlin in his sixth season with an overall record of 91 and 93. Utah Valley coming off a very disappointing 15-point loss, excuse me, 14-point loss against Seattle on Thursday night just 48 hours ago. It's going to be really interesting to see how well the Wolverines respond tonight. A quick turnaround but yet sometimes that works in a team's favor. Wolverines averaging 67 points a game, but a whack best defensively giving up just 64.7 a game. Dick Hunsaker, their head coach in his 12th season. All right, here's Eric Allen, PA announcer for the starting lineup for the Wolverines. And now, the starting lineup for our UVU Wolverines. At forward, a 6'5 junior from Boise, Idaho. Number 15, Rich Bruni. The other forward, a 6'7 freshman from Yuma City, California. Number 21, Zach Nelson. At center, a 6'9 senior from Battleful, Utah. Number 34, Big Ben at guard, a 6'1 senior from Mesa, Arizona, number three, Kayane Inu. And the other guard, a 6'1 senior from North Salt Lake City, number 12, Holton Hansaker. Head coach of the Wolverines in his 12th season is Dick Hansaker. Assistant coaches Curtis Gottney, Terry Barker, and Chris Smart. Show me what you got, Berlady. Show me what you got, Shawty. Show me what you got, baby. And that game for a couple of different reasons. Uh, all sorts of things working against the Wolverines. But for the Wolverines, you got them coming off a loss. Hopefully they're fired up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from experience, sometimes the best thing that you can do after a tough loss is have one day to prepare for your next opponent and have it be a quick turnaround because you know you cannot linger on the last game. And you've got to be ready to go because, as you said, there are a lot of factors that are at play here. And 
the Wolverine players are going to realize that and they're going to be prepared for it. Ben Aird will jump center against Joe Kammerer, 6-9 against 6-9. Idaho controls, we're underway here at the UCCU Center. Glad you're with us. Western Athletic Conference action. That's Madison, their go-to guy. They're all everything. Wolverines will have to shut down Madison in this game. Inside feed almost stolen away by Hunsaker. Instead, it'll be Idaho basketball. Yeah, a little bit of a mix-up underneath. You had Beersek wide open under, underneath, but nice help rotation from Holton getting down, side, down inside, swiping the ball away. Three-point attempt from Connor Hill. And Ben Aird, big center, coming out to try to block the shot. Fouled Hill. His first, team's first. You know, very early on, Idaho running a ton of picks on the ball. They're getting that inside. They're going to try. Granted, it is only one possession into the game, but they're going to try and get the bigs of the Wolverines involved in the pick and roll. And that foul from Ben, very similar to the one we saw or one we saw on Thursday night where he fouled a, a three-point shooter as well. So when he goes to contest that shot, he's got a lot of momentum. And he, he falls into the, to the shooter. Because it was a three-point shot on the foul, Connor Hill will get three free throws. Makes the bookends for a 2-0 Idaho lead. And Idaho with the pressure defense here, maybe trying to slow down the Wolverines and where they can put pressure. Good job of handling it on the first possession there. Let's see what they fall back into. They are falling back into a 2-3, almost a 3-2 zone. Zach Nelson ties this one at two. Zach Nelson, a redshirt freshman from Yuba City, California. Had 12 points against Seattle, their place. Jump shot won't go. Idaho controls, though. Hill for three. Well, the score is Connor Hill five, Utah Valley two. A key thing for the Wolverines against this, this pressure, this full court pressure, take your time, but attack when you have the opportunities. That's a great way to get easy points is if you can break down a full court press because there's so much space and the defenders are so extended. Okay, Avi Enos guarded by Hill. Eight seconds to shoot. Zach Nelson, nice drive. Yeah, great start from Zach. He gets the basket early on the first possession inside. That one not settling for anything outside. He was pressured and he drove. Scott for three. Again, Scott coming off of a pick on the ball. They're not shy about putting up three pointers. They average six of them per game. Per six made per game. Yeah, they're not the best percentage wise. They do shoot 33 on 33 percent on the season. But as you said, they they aren't afraid to shoot and they've all their points have come from three point attempts. Ben Air jump hook. Won't go. Bruniel tried to keep it alive, but Idaho comes away with it. There are two free throws, of course, coming off of a foul on a three-point attempt. So, yes, they're, they're very perimeter-oriented. We talked about that as a key to the game. They've got to defend that perimeter. Madison for three. And Idaho out quickly, 11-4. to four. Steven Madison had 21 points against UVU at their place. Holton for three. Reveal again, not able to pull down the offensive board. Madison in the lane this time. And it's 13 to four. Wow, what a hot start from Idaho shooting wise. Going to get a quick timeout from Coach Hunsaker, but Idaho doing just about anything that, that they want on the offensive end. Well, they put up five shots and made four of them. Meanwhile, UVU just two of four here in the early going. Both of the shots from UVU going down from Zach Nelson. 13 to four. Wow. A little eight nothing run for Idaho. We talk about Madison. He's the second leading scorer in the WAC. So this is two consecutive games that Utah Valley has faced either the number one or number two mm -hmm. scorer in the WAC. Uh, Yuma Pig for Seattle came in here 48 hours ago and lit up. UVU for 32 points. 
Madison looking pretty good so far. He's already got five tonight. Yeah, and, and the key is not to panic. I, I mean, we're, we're almost four minutes into the game, so if you're the Wolverines, don't press offensively. You know, they, you don't have to get all the points back on one possession. Typically, I think they've done a very good job of running their offense against zone offenses, excuse me, zone defenses. And so I think they just need to be patient, keep track of themselves, and work the ball inside just like that. Ben Aird working it inside, got some contact from Kammerer. Ben Aird will be at the free throw line shooting two. First team foul against Idaho. Yeah, see Ben working inside. He gets Kammerer, he pins him behind him. Just does a nice job of creating contact and getting to the line. And if you've been with us in the past, you know why I'm not talking during free throws. Oh boy. <laughs> Feel free to take it, man. Ben Aird makes them both. UVU is the number 13 team in the nation from the free throw line. Usually if I say that before the free throws, they start missing them. You know, in the matchup here, I, I was curious to see how the Wolverines were going to match up against Steven Madison. But, you know, on possessions here, you get Ben Aird matched up on him and nice job forcing a miss three. But Mitch Berniel looks like he's been the one early on to draw the matchup. Hunsaker drives in the lane and a nice finish. Yeah, and, and that's a great push from Holton because you get a wild three-point shot. You get that rebound out and going, you're going to get another opportunity here as you're going to get an over-the-back call. Foul going against Birasek. Junior from Senegal picks up his first foul. Team's second. You know, and Idaho runs... Uh, uh, it's hard to tell because they're they're trying to mix up their defenses, but they've run a bunch of different defenses so far. They're always looking at Coach Berlin trying to figure out what defense they're in. Brunel's three will not go. Madison pulls down another rebound. After that eight nothing spurt by Idaho, UVU has the last four points in this one. And the Wolverines are switching picks on the ball. Watch them how they'll switch these picks on the ball around the perimeter. Great defensive possession here going. Four seconds to shoot. Scott will take it. Ben Aird picks up the loose ball rebound. That's exactly how you, you play the pick and roll. Multiple times they switched. Great job of big guys defending little guys and little guys defending big guys on that possession. Hunsaker yeah. tried to hit Zach Nelson on almost an alley-oop type pass. The not able to connect on that one. That'll bring us to our first media timeout. Utah Valley trailing early here at the UCCU Center. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. Graduate with a diploma and a resume. I hate math. I can't count how many times I've heard people say that. And as a math teacher, I take it personally. So, while working on my master's at UVU, I developed ways to help kids not hate math. Does engaged learning make a difference? You do the math. Well, Idaho making no point, bones about putting up the three-pointers. They're three of four from three-point land so far. First trip for Idaho to the UCCU Center ever. If you're not familiar with the University of Idaho, they're up in Moscow, Idaho. Don Verlin, the head coach. Joe Vandal, the mascot. They've been in the whack for a couple of years. Vandal gold and silver are the colors. 
Vandals. Not sure where the nickname came from. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what exactly is a Vandal? Uh, somebody looked it up for me today uh, online and said, years and years and years ago, somebody referred to them as a team that stole the ball like a bunch of Vandals. Hmm. And I guess the name stuck. So whatever their previous name was, it changed. Good insight there. Yeah, and you know, you can believe everything you read on the internet. Yes, you can. 13 to 8, Utah Valley down. Hill for three. What else? Good. Yeah, mix up defensively. Two guys went to one man. You had Keave Enos and Brendan Evans both flying at number 41, Ty Egbert underneath, and that left Hill wide open. So a miscommunication. Keave Enos for three back the other way. Keave Enos, the number one three point shooter in this. Whack. Yeah, and that possession just goes to show what you can do if you can have. A guy like Holton break. You're going to get Holton called for a foul underneath. But if you can have a point guard who can break through and one by by himself break a press, you're just going to break down the defense and Keave wide open on the wing. First foul on Holton Hunsaker. Teams second. Both teams have been whistled for two fouls each here in the first five and a half minutes. Yeah, a, a common theme for UVU is they front the post. So again, if you can get someone to lob the ball, you got to have weak side help. Holton just a little bit late on the help. Goodness gracious. Connor Hill, they are raining threes at the UCCU Center. They're five out of six. And it's 19 to 11. Brendan Evans and Hayes Garrity into the game for UVU. Two seniors, Holton Hunsaker and Ben Aird, getting a breather right now. Yeah, and see, look at this defense. I mean, it's a little different. Normally, you see. Whoa, Brendan Evans with some authority, baby. What a finish there for Bennett. And I, I love that attack. Someone's going to play a zone. He did a nice job of spreading the court on the baseline, subtle pump fake, and driving. What a finish from Brendan. See Mitch Bruniel inside the paint. Here's another three. The three ball is what did UVU in 48 hours ago against Absolutely. Seattle. Absolutely. Yuma Pig hit five in a row himself. Right now, Idaho has hit six out of seven three pointers. Well, and what did I say? They shot 33% on the year, so it's so unlike them. But Zach Nelson with a lot of focus tonight early on, showing a nice, a nice move inside with the finish. You know, the Wolverines are six out of nine from the floor. They're just one of three from three-point land. That's why they're trailing right now. Madison driving in, missing. Brendan Evans fights for the rebound. Garrity, lightning fast, and trying to finish was Evans. That one, I think, hanging on the rim sort of made yeah. the ball bounce out. Bounced it out, yep. Madison driving in, all sorts of contact. Charge is called. Brendan Evans had position. See the replay here. Madison charging. Brendan Evans sliding over. Looked like he was moving just a little bit when he slid over, but foul four in the Wolverines' favor there. Hard to get those calls on the road. Wow, what confusion here. The ball inbounds. No team is ready. Brendan Evans goes up for another slam and is fouled hard. This one is going to go against Ty Egbert. Oh, did you see that? When they inbounded the ball, there was an Idaho player who was subbing into the game, walks onto the court. The ball is already inbounds. Idaho was not ready. Nice job of UVU being aware and pushing that ball. Idaho had no clue what was going on. First foul against Egbert, team's fourth. Evans misses the first of two free throws. But one thing I, I, I love, Jim, I, I love from the bigs that UVU has shown so far is the intensity of driving to the basket. They're not settling for anything outside. They're being aggressive, and they're trying to get closer to the rim when they get the ball. Dean for three, missed it. Garrity with the rebound. Hunsaker for three. Bottom. That's when you get an early shot offensively, you get a long rebound. You got to push that ball. Don't allow Idaho to get set. Nice job of converting. Idaho's nine point lead has been cut to four. Coming up in the 12 minute mark, first half. Yeah. 
Madison working against Chad Ross now. And they're going to call one of the Wolverines. Chad Ross getting called for the first, his first, team's third. Back in a minute with the Wolverines down by four. Both teams shooting more than 50% here in the first half. 7 of 13 for Idaho, 7 of 12 for Utah Valley. But it's the three point shooting right now that's got Idaho out in front. They're 6 out of 8, UVU 2 of 4. Something I, I like uh, that I've seen so far, as you mentioned, most of Idaho's points have come from the three. They only have two points in the paint. So the Wolverines doing a nice job of making it a perimeter game. They themselves have the Wolverines have 10 points in the paint. So again, they're getting the ball inside some easy baskets and they have five fast break points. So it is early, but they're looking to push and when they can, they're getting out and running. UVU has not led here in this first half. Game's been tied once at two. And that's been all Idaho until UVU finally started chipping away. Connor Hill missing this time. Garrity with another rebound. Garrity hesitates now puts up the floater good again just aggressiveness you know Hayes against Seattle on Thursday night had a lot of those shots where he drove to his left pulled up and, and knocked it down so you know, Idaho gone, going a little bit colder from the three point line not hitting as many as they did they haven't scored over two minutes until now Madison gets that one to go and one foul going to go against Ben Ayer who checked back into the game picks up his second now decision time for UVU's coaching staff. Do you take one of your best players, Ben Aird, out with two fouls? Still got 11-19 to play, or 11-18 to play, rather, first half. He stays out there for now. Madison misses the free throw. So it's a four-point lead for Idaho. And now Idaho man-to-man -man defense. So again, switching it up, doing something different. Inside Ben Aird, drawing contact again. He'll shoot two more free throws. You know, the, the play that the Wolverines just ran, trying to get the ball inside, Taylor Brown inside setting kind of a rub screen, trying to get Ben to curl off of that to get right in the paint, right underneath the basket. As we see the replay, you see Taylor Brown setting the screen there, and Ben just posts up virtually the same type of action or same type of play that Idaho ran on the previous possession. So the Wolverines run very similarly what uh, what Idaho ran. You're really just trying to cause confusion in there between the defenders. You know, you get you, you get Taylor Brown in there just confusing the defense. They're not knowing where he's going and he can knock off the defender. And that's what got Ben open. Ben missing the back end of the two free throws. Just under 11 minutes left here first half. Three point deficit for Utah Valley. Yeah, and Utah Valley now gone to a 2 3 zone. Madison has it stripped away by Hunsaker. Turnover. What a great job of Holton helping down. Holton tries to take it in. Blocking foul is going to get called against Idaho's Mike Scott. Going to see the drive here. Nice hesitation move from Holton. 
Wasn't much. It didn't look like any contact there. I don't, I don't think there was a foul there. You disagree with him, Christian? Never, right? <laughs> have That's we, the beauty have that we have of replay. Yeah, no kidding. There's a travel. Brendan Evans losing control of that one. Still a three point lead for Idaho in this one. He ran off eight straight points to lead 13 to 4. The Wolverines then came back with seven of their own a little bit later to trail by just two at 22 to 20. But right now, Idaho leading by three. Suki Wiggins, or excuse me, Suki Wiggs. Brendan Evans picking up the foul on the drive by Wiggs. Yeah, and what, what Idaho's done is you see Brennan getting giving the foul there. Uh, Idaho sets a lot of those picks on the ball, but what they also do is they're trying to get their weak side or opposite side guards coming off of a lot of screens. So they're running along the baseline trying to come off of screens that either a guard is setting or that another big guy is setting. It's an action that the Wolverines do a lot, but watch that because their wing or opposite wings are running virtually the, the full length of the court, so to speak trying to get off and come off of those screens. This is the second. It's a four point deficit for UVU right now. About halfway through our first half. Inside to Zach Nelson. Nice. Yeah, I love that action just going inside. Hayes coming off the screen and if your big guys will post, they're going to be wide open inside. Wolverines have clawed back to within two again. Wiggs. My goodness. Well, at first they were hitting everything from outside. Now they're starting to go inside a little bit yes. more, Matt. They're working that ball inside just a little bit. Zach Nelson shot up off the top of the backboard. Idaho basketball. For the Wolverines, Zach's got eight points. Hunsaker with five. Three each for Kayavi Enos and Ben Aird. Two each for Garrity and Evans. Madison drives in. He's got nine points now. And it's a six point Idaho lead. Yeah, and that was an isolation play trying to get Madison the ball at the elbow, and they got it to him, and he just did a nice job with the finish. Brendan in traffic. Get the foul on Ty Egbert. Yeah, I think this is a great sign for UVU. You know, we, we know their capabilities of shooting from the outside, but, you know, their bigs have really impressed me so far. See Brendan losing the ball, but collecting himself, and. Edbert, uh, excuse me, Egbert, hands were not straight in the air. They come down, and that's why he gets called for the foul. Chad Ross replaces Zach Nelson. Mitch Bruniel into the game. Taylor Brown. Keavi Enos also in, along with Holton Hunsaker. Your five Wolverines now. Brendan sort of gave a little face as he turned around and ran. I finally got a free throw to go down. Yeah, here the Wolverines go again, 2 3 zone. Got to try and keep that ball out of the high post to, in Madison's hands. Another three in and out, but the follow is there. Yeah, that's always the hardest thing going when you play a zone is making sure that you don't give up offensive rebounds. And times at that time, the Wolverines give up a weak side board. Just an easy finish, easy put back. Wolverines down by seven, eight and a half minutes to play, first half. First time these two played up in Idaho, Utah Valley led at halftime 34 26. So Idaho is already five points better this one than they were at home. Still got a little ways to go in the first half. 17 second shot clock, three pointer won't go. Brennan Evans rebound again, and boom! What in the world wow. has gotten into Brendan Evans? Yeah, he's taking it personally. I, I just watching him, you can tell he is taking this game personally because 
the way that he is attacking, he is not letting anybody stop him. And what finishes? Good grief. He's had a couple more that just wouldn't go down. Outside jumper, long two. That one coming from Wiggs. Well, it's not the Wolverines are playing that badly. No. It's just Idaho's just hitting a lot of threes. Hunsaker driving in and one. Yep. Wiggs trying to stay with him, couldn't do it. Excuse me, that's not Wiggs. See the replay there, holding Second. just a strong, strong take to the basket. Knew he was going to get fouled and finish. They say the devil is in the details. And in here, there are a lot of details. Flavor, color, texture, temperature, presentation. It all has to be flawless. Pressure? Maybe. But with Engage Learning, I get a lot of practice. And I'll bet your homework never tasted this good. Holton Hunsaker on the drive, fouled by Sec. Hey, hey, Jim, thanks for giving it to me. I saw a really interesting exchange between Zach Nelson and Coach Hunsaker after the first media timeout. Coach was telling him to be aggressive and break the press. I don't think he's very happy with the, with their, with the way that they are being slow bringing up the basketball. So you want Zach and Holton to be aggressive in trying to break this full court press. Back to you, Jim. Matt Biamonte working our sidelines for us tonight. Wolverines 61 percent shooting. They're actually shooting better than Idaho yeah. at 60 percent. Well and, and Connor Hill you know with 14 points that's more than he averages per game on the season. So you know he is he's been the offensive starter so to speak for Idaho. But geez I mean this is. This is a great performance offensively for UVU. It's just Idaho's matched it, and they're, they're on fire, too. Bolton Nunsager pulls the Wolverines to within four. They've been to as many, or been as close as two a couple of times. Have never led in this first half. Still got 7.20 to play. Long two. Won't go. Right place, right time for Madison. Yeah, and that was that's not what you want to do because you give up the offensive rebound and Ben could have been a little bit more aggressive in going for the block shot, but he realizes he's got those fouls and he doesn't want to pick up another one. He's, he has to be careful. They need him in the game. Hunsaker. Holton's starting to take a little bit of control. He's got 10 points. First Wolverine in double figures. Madison. Well, you know, there's been another three. Yeah, we, we've said that the Wolverines are doing a nice job offensively, but defensively, I mean, that's just a situation where you can't have Madison trailing. You know, he's their best player, and he was wide open for that three. Miscommunication somewhere from UVU. Folks, in the first game between these two, Idaho hit two three pointers for the whole game. They were two of 16. So far in this first half, 7 of 11. Hunsager off for the three. Ido tracks down the rebound. Looking to add to a seven point lead. Mike Scott will slow it up for Idaho. Jumper from the corner. Bruneo with the rebound. Ben aired with two fouls, spinning. 
powering it in. Yeah, it, nice job of Ben taking his time, reading the defense. Usually we see him go to the right hand hook. That time he spun back underneath. Chad Ross picks it up. And uh, timeout called by Utah Valley. 531 left. First half, Wolverines down by six. Man, I get the feeling Utah Valley's not playing all that bad. It's no. just Idaho's playing really, really good. Yeah, and I think, you know, you see 33 points and how well they've shot. I think offensively they've played really, really well. But defensively, it's very uncharacteristic from what we're used to seeing on the season because the Wolverines have had miscommunications, baskets given up in transition, you know, two defenders going to one offensive player. I think on the defensive end is where we're, you know, what we're seeing we're not accustomed to seeing. But I, I agree with you, Jim. I, Idaho has some very skilled players in Madison and Hill, and, you know, how many points they have show that. They both have 14 points. So those two players are really where it, what it comes down to for, uh, for UVU if, I think if the Wolverines can can stop or slow down those players, then you know they're going to be I mean, they're already in the basketball game, but they're going to trim the lead. Brendan Evans back on the floor for UVU, replacing Ben Aird. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to see Ben again because I've noticed a couple times defensively he's been a little too hesitant because he doesn't want to pick up that third foul. Hard to blame him too. Brendan Evans is playing. Yeah, oh one yeah. Of one of his it, better games I've seen. Alley oop, a little too hard. Bruniel had it slapped away from him, though. Maybe we'll just call that a pass off the backboard. Yeah. I've been the passer on that play many a time and <laughs> have done much worse. At least his hit the backboard. I would love to see your highlight reel, my friend. Not on that play, you wouldn't. Okay, Avi misses the three, but Wolverines maintain possession. Down by five, just under five minutes left, first half. Yeah. Three from Kiavi. Bottom. And, and a nice job of Kiavi spreading the zone because he took just a couple of side dribbles there, created space for himself, and knocks down the three. Uh, I like how the Wolverines are attacking this. Zach Nelson against the zone. He's hanging out around the free throw line. Another three from Idaho. My goodness. They See, are 8 of 12. Yeah, and, and that is not what the Wolverines are used to and not what Idaho is used to shooting the ball that well, that is. But, again, another miscommunication because there's no wow. help. But what another great play from uh, Holton to Zach. What an assist from UVU's all-time assist leader, Holton Hunsaker. Madison working for it, working for it. Wolverines getting called for the foul. It'll be Holton Hunsaker picking up his second personal. Yeah, in the last several possessions, what we've seen is Madison is the one that inbounds the ball, and you see him get the ball at the top. We've seen him shoot the three. Here he drives. You see Holton gets called for the foul coming in a little bit late on the swipe there, but you know, tough to defend because Madison is the trailer. You've got to get out on him because you know that he can shoot the three, but then you also have to be aware for a play like that where if you're too if you're too close to him or too far up on him, he's going to look to drive. The Wolverines have trailed in this game by as many as nine. They have fought back on three separate occasions to trail by two, only to see Idaho come back and hit a, a three or a couple of twos, usually a three. Right, and you, you say to yourself, if, if you're preparing or you're, you're coaching this or if you're watching it, you say, wow, they're only, you know, a 33% three-point shooting team on the season. This likely isn't going to last the entire game, so you just got to keep playing through it. Garrity missing. Idaho, and you got to wonder, maybe Idaho saw the film of what Umapig did in here from the three-point line on Thursday night, just 48 hours ago. And they decided to come in here, and we'll put up a lot of threes and see what happens as well. Yeah, and they're doing a pretty good job running their, their offensive sets. I mean, they're, they're very active. They've got a lot of players that are looking to score. So they're doing a pretty good job offensively. It's not often you see a team come in and have 45 points at this, at this point in the first half. Brendan Evans charging. 
45-38, Wolverines down by seven. Media timeout. I don't think of myself as just an undergrad. Okay, so I'm a sophomore, but I'm at UVU where it's all about engaged learning. Leading a project on DNA research, I don't have to wait for grad school to get this kind of experience. As a UVU student, I guess you could say engaged learning is in my DNA. People talk about life after college, you know, entering the real world. But this is engaged learning. I'm not just reading about it or watching someone else do it. I'm learning by doing. I'm at UVU. I'm in the real world every day. Back of the UCCU Center, Jim McCullough along with Matt Peterson, Utah Valley down by seven to Idaho. And statistically, UVU is shooting a better percentage than is Idaho, but Idaho's just nailing the threes. We showed you the profile from Idaho. Here's UVU's profile. They're located in Orem. Dick Hunsaker, the head coach here, NCAA Division I. First year members of the WAC. Willie the Wolverine, their mascot, green and gold, their colors. 32,000 students attending Utah Valley University this semester. And a new building going up every week, it seems. Uh, when, I, when I drive here around campus, it's pretty fun to see the expansion and what the school is going through as a school and also as uh, their athletic program. It's very exciting. Lots of excitement around the athletic program here at UVU. But UVU is going to have to uh, start winning these close games that they're allowing their opponents to come in here and long range bomb them from three. Idaho, eight of 12. Meanwhile, Utah Valley, three of eight. Idaho has made as many threes as Utah Valley has attempted. And again, I hate to keep harping back, but that first game a few weeks ago up in Idaho that UVU won that thing by five. Uh, Idaho only hit two three-pointers. Yeah. And Madison went 0 for 2. He did have 21 points, but nine points from the free throw line that night. So whatever they've seen on tape or whatever changes Idaho has made, so far, so good. Wolverines still have three minutes left here in this first half. Idaho with possession. Glenn Dean gives over to Wiggs. Long two. Six straight points now for Idaho. And Wiggs you know, on the year shooting 44% from the field, so he has the ability to knock that down. But once again, I mean, it. There wasn't a Wolverine defender near him. Ben Aird, addition off Bruniel. Yeah, good things, ha good things happen when they can get that ball inside to Ben because he's a good decision maker. He'll either turn and shoot it or he'll pass it as he did in that case. Bruniel's first two pulled the Wolverines of Utah Valley to within seven. See this play a lot. Wiggs sprinting across. Madison getting it up and in. Yeah, you, you've seen Wiggs on that play knock down the jump shot. He's come off of the screen. That time he po he passes it inside to Madison. And again, Ben having to be a, a little bit cautious not to pick up another foul. Whistle away from the basketball. It's going to go against Idaho's Glenn Dean. Team's eighth, or excuse me, team's ninth at the free throw line will be Holton Hensaker. Just under two minutes to play in this one. Wolverines down by nine. This matches the biggest lead for Idaho here in this first half. Wolverines have not led. Huntsaker's got 11 points. Zach Nelson, the only other Wolverine in double figures with 10. Meanwhile, Madison's already got his season high 18 points with still 22 minutes left in this game. 
And offensively for Idaho, it's really been about, you know, three guys. You have Steven Madison, you have Connor Hill, who has cooled off a little bit, but then you've got Siku Wiggs, who's done a nice job of providing some perimeter scoring, too. Working it into Madison. Nice block for Bruneal. Oh, they're going to call goaltending. Let's see the replay on that. I don't know where they were calling the. Nope. Dang it. No replay on that one for us. That one hurts. We'd love to have seen that one. Because the ball wasn't above the rim, I didn't think. Thought Mitch came in and got it, but Idaho gets the call. Bruneal. Garrity. Wiggs with the rebound. Madison runs into Zach Nelson and charges. And Madison is very slow to get up. Yeah, watch this. You, you get the, we see the replay there, and Dwayne Allen, the referee, right in front of us, explaining it to the Idaho coaches that he cleared him with his shoulder was the exact words of the officials. So, you know, nice job of Zach getting back in front. And you see on that replay, you see Zach's head snap back because that was the call. He cleared him out with his shoulder, even though Zach was moving. That's what got the call. That, that's what got the charge there is nice job of Zach recovering and keeping himself in front of Steven Madison. Steven Madison limped in pain to the Idaho bench. He's got 20 points. My goodness, I'd hate to see the young man not be able to go. Under a minute, first half. Wolverines down by nine. Garrity for three. Bottom. A shot from Hayes. Let's see if the Wolverines can get a stop here and get another chance offensively to cut into that lead. But big shot there from Hayes for the team and for his confidence as well. Idaho's six point lead. Coach Don Berlin, you might have heard him right in front of us running by, screaming timeout, timeout, timeout. So timeout taken by Idaho. 24.9 left first half. 51 45 Wolverines down by six. This is a. Uh, was that a that was the goal. That was right? a goal. Ten. They may have called it because he got the he hit the rim on that. I wonder if we can get that replay again because I maybe the ball was above the rim there but it didn't look like it was over the cylinder and it didn't look like it hit off the glass so. You see Madison still trying to shake off the injury that he got. On the collision. Here's the replay again of the goal 10. Yeah, let's see if the ball is over the rim. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's probably what they called. It was in the cylinder, yeah, right? In the cylinder, that's what I mean. In, in the cylinder from the initial look here. And the whole ball doesn't have to be any portion of yeah, the ball. Yeah, I think any portion. I mean, Mitch got the ball, obviously, and he hit the rim with his hand, so I'm not sure if that's considered a, a goaltending as well. But it, in that second replay, it looks as if it was over the cylinder. Six seconds to shoot for Idaho. Dean takes it in. And a whistle. Zach Nelson being called for the foul for UVU. Yeah, and in those. No, those, no, no. Brendan Evans. Yeah, I think they're going to get Brendan on that one. His that, third. His third foul, yep. Got the big guys uh, in trouble there. Ben has two. Now Brendan has three. Not good for UVU. That's the situation that you run into when you have, you know, the shot clock running down. And so many times tonight and in previous games, we've seen the Wolverines switch those screens. And it gives you know a point guard like Dean Glenn space and Brendan Evans guarding him. It's just a tough cover for Brendan. You do your best to stay in front, but eight eight and a half excuse me eight point eight seconds left. Let's see if the Wolverines can get this in and and uh, and get a final attempt before the buzzer. 
Garrity over to Bruniel. Back to Zach Nelson. That won't go. That's how the teams will head to the locker room. 53 points from Idaho may be the most so far in any half this season at home for sure. People talk about life after college, you know, entering the real world. But this is engaged learning. I'm not just reading about it or watching someone else do it. I'm learning by doing. I'm at UVU. I'm in the real world every day. Bus pass, five dollars. UVU t-shirt, so you can impress the ladies, twenty-five dollars. iPod Nano, one hundred and twenty dollars. A degree from UVU, so you can afford your own car someday. Priceless. For everything else, there's student loans. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills. I had an idea. Lots of people have ideas. But engaged learning helped me develop my idea and make it real. And now with sales over a million dollars, best assignment ever. Back at halftime here at the UCCU Center, Utah Valley trailing Idaho 53-45. And uh, if you're a UVU fan, that's not good news. UVU only two and seven this year when trailing at half. And by the way, Idaho, when they're leading at half, five and four. They've had some trouble hanging on to leads in games so far this season. Matt Peterson has not changed his look. This is Zach Trujillo, correct? Did yes. I say that right, yes, Zach? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. President of the Mall. Of the Mall. All right. Uh, tell the folks that are listening, like, what the heck is the Mall? Okay. So the Mall is M-A-W-L, the Mighty Athletic Wolverine League. Uh, we're the group of students that come to the games and, and cheer our teams on. And we're in charge of sports marketing uh, for, the, for the students here. And as you can see, we have a little bit of work to do. Well... We got 32,000 students on this campus, Zach. Yep. And as president of the mall, you need to get uh, about what? Say uh, the place only holds nine, uh, eight thousand. So I think if you got seven thousand of them here, everybody'd yeah. be thrilled with you. Yeah, that's our goal. We'll double your salary, Zach. If Perfect. You, if, awesome. If you do that. <laughs> All right. So what, what's up with the mall? What? What's the benefits? What's going on? Um, so what we're doing right now. Um, we are we're doing a lot of classroom visits, hall publicity, just getting people aware of our team, uh, how we're doing this year, and that and the schedule. Um, our team eight and eight and two in the whack. Um, we're projected to make March Madness, and so just getting that information out to the uh, to the students to know what kind of product we have at, here at UVU is is what we're trying to do now. And um, we have a good we have a good committee. Um, so. What, what we're doing now is we're just trying to get people here. We're, we're doing tailgate parties. Um, we're going to have a tailgate party at the New Mexico State game. Uh, we had one on Thursday, and we had probably 150 students there or so, I would say, maybe 100. And so, yeah, just getting people aware of what we, what we are and that we're a legitimate force in the nation now. Well, you know, UVU has uh, oftentimes been in the shadow of a couple of other teams in this media market that – get most of the media but and with UVU joining the WAC and winning games that will eventually take care of itself and I think the students will come around so you've got your work cut out for you now yeah. you got the green man group is that part of the mall because the green man group 
a pretty energetic bunch. Yeah, they're not part of the mall, but we do work with them. Um, yeah, they're a bunch of they're crazy insane. guys. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I know what you were going to say. Yeah, we need Don't their... say that, Zach. <laughs> we're on live TV, okay? Don't say what you're going to say. All right, you got the WAC tournament going up, uh, yeah. coming up in a couple of weeks down in Las Vegas. Uh, you guys doing anything? Yeah, we're, we're taking a bus down full of students. Um, it's a cool it's a cool deal actually the school is help helping uh, finance uh, the bus and hotel rooms it's just a small fee for students uh, we go down watch all the games we're gonna have a few pool parties it's gonna be uh, pool. fun pool parties pool, yeah. pool parties okay yep. March 12th through the 15th yep. I think the 12th is uh, a Wednesday if I believe in yep. March uh, so the bus is going down when Wednesday morning early Wednesday morning early yep. our UVU women play on Wednesday then the men play Thursday yep then depending on when, if they continue to win, they'll play championship games uh, on Saturday. Yes. So that'll be fun. It's going to be sweet. Zach, all right. So uh, how much does it cost to join the mall? Not that I want to join, but I'm <laughs> sure there's somebody out there much younger than I that wants to join. Yeah, it's $10. Uh, with the $10, you get a T-shirt, and then you get to all of the games for free. Well, all students get in for free, but then you get uh, uh, you can take part of the tailgate parties. Uh, last night we had Waffle Love. Um they're the most amazing waffles anyone could ever eat. Uh, <laughs> that's a company, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, people, that, people watching in Idaho are probably going, okay, that's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, and the T-shirt, this is the T-shirt? Yeah, this is the T-shirt. Yep, strong in battle till the game is done. And is, if you uh, sign up for the, the bus that goes down to, uh, to Vegas, then you'll get one of these shirts on the bus as well. Cool. All right, so, my friend. We will see you in Vegas. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Zach True Hero, president of the mall. We'll take a break. We're at halftime. UVU trailing Idaho. I don't think of myself as just an undergrad. Okay, so I'm a sophomore, but I'm at UVU where it's all about engaged learning. Leading a project on DNA research, I don't have to wait for grad school to get this kind of experience. As a UVU student, I guess you could say engaged learning is in my DNA. People talk about life after college, you know, entering the real world. But this is engaged learning. I'm not just reading about it or watching someone else do it. I'm learning by doing. I'm at UVU. I'm in the real world every day. Back to the UCCU Center. Jim McCullough along with Matt Peterson. We're at halftime. Utah Valley trailing Idaho 53-45. Haven't had time to look, Matt, because I was talking to some uh, crazy guy from the mall. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Crazy guys are good. No, they're good. They do a good job here. Yep. Uh, they're just getting things going. you got the Green Man Group. That's who you see there. They, they wear those 24-7, I'm told. All right, let's look at some highlights, Matt. I'll let you walk uh, our viewers through this first half of action. Well, for both teams, you're going to see a lot of made shots because, you know, the Wolverines shot the ball really well in the first half. You know, geez, 57%. You know, you're going to see some highlight plays like, you know, that dunk from, from Brendan Evans. He, he had another amazing dunk early on. But, you know, offensively, things have been going great for, for UVU. They've, they've done some really nice things. They've involved a lot of players. Not one player has dominated offensively. It's been a pretty pretty balanced uh, team effort. I mean, you have Holton and, and Zach that are, are leading the way, but you know a lot of players have done a lot of really nice things. So, but again, a lot of made shots from both sides and both ends of the court. All right, as we look at the stat sheet, what jumps out at you, my friend? You always look at points in the paint. Yeah, I think points in the paint is big. I mean, the Wolverines are leading that, 22 points for them, uh, 16 for Idaho. But, I mean, there's so much we could talk about, but really what sticks out is 8 of 12 from the three for Idaho. And they have Steven Madison with 20 points, averages 18 on the year. And you have Connor Hill with 14 points, averages just under 14 points a year on the year. So it's been about those two guys. You know, it, really, the, the Wolverines have nothing, I don't think, to complain about on offense. They've done, they've done everything against a lot of different kinds of defenses, man, zone, crazy defenses that have been run. But where they've really struggled is defensively, it, it's, you know, 
not something that we're used to seeing a team coming in here performing so well on offense. I Iowa's got 53 points here at the half, which is which is really unheard of. Yeah, the most points Wolverines have given up this season in any game has been uh, 93, and that was uh, was that Oklahoma State that got that? Yeah, at Oklahoma State, third game of the season, which was quite frankly an anomaly on that one. But yeah. Idaho on track to to break that, so the Wolverines got their work cut out for them. But Madison limped off. Yeah. I don't know how bad he's hurt. Maybe our sideline reporter can catch up with their trainer and find that out. But uh, uh, it looked like a hip or an ankle or some, yeah. something like that. It, it was on the offensive yeah. foul that he had on Zach. So it, something, it looked to me like it was some, some type of an ankle injury. But you, know, you never want to see somebody hurt, especially when he's playing. I mean, he's 8 of 12, excuse me, 8 of 10 from the field, 2 of 3 from 3, 2 yep. of 3 from the line. And you have Connor Hill, 4 of 8 from the field. All all four of his shots have been three-pointers. I mean, they set that tone really early on in the game, and they pretty much just continued it. But the good thing is is that the Wolverines have matched it offensively. It's just, again, on that on that defensive end, they haven't been able to contain two guys. Holton Hensinger leading score for UVU at halftime with 12 points. Zach Nelson, the only other Wolverine in double figures, with 10. Uh, six points from Kayavi Enos, five from Ben Aird, five from Ge Hayes Garrity, five from Brendan Evans, two from... Mitch Bruniel, Chad Ross, Taylor Brown, both, both saw action, did not score in that first half. All right, let's talk about the situation with Utah Valley uh, leading the WAC right now at an 8-2 and two record with New Mexico State just one uh, half a game behind them, really, at 9-3. Uh, and three. And right now, New Mexico State is all over Chicago State, leading by 20 at halftime. So you got to figure New Mexico State is going to move to 9-3. and three. So the Wolverines, uh, if they win this thing, they're still half a game ahead. If they were to end up losing this game to Idaho, fall to 8-3 and three in the whack, and suddenly you're trailing New Mexico State. You still haven't played them the second time. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know. Is When you were a senior, and were you ever faced with pressure like this that Utah Valley is facing being in the whack and leading the whack? Not necessarily, no, because, I mean, we knew my my senior year, we knew that we, we didn't have a tournament that we were going for or going to. It was, you know, as soon as we played our last game of the regular season, it was over. And you hope that, you know, all the talk, because they've gotten a lot of the, the Wolverines have gotten a lot of attention, and you hope that that hasn't, hasn't got to them in any way because there's still a ton of basketball left, and then you have that ton of regular season basketball left, and then you have the tournament that you come to where I anything can happen. So, you know, I, I know Coach Sunsaker has not looked on that at all. I mean, his focus is always going to be on the very next game. But, you know, I think the Wolverines have a lot to look forward to. You know, there's a lot of basketball left. But what is obviously most important to them is this second half tonight and how they stop Stephen Madison and, uh, and Mr. Hill, too. Sorry, I was talking to our producer. We're having some tape issues. That's why we're not able to throw it to our final commercial break. All right, Utah Valley, despite uh, struggling this one, still got – Five games left after tonight, Matt. Three of those are at home. But first, next week, on the road at Chicago State on Thursday night, at Kansas City on Saturday. Chicago State, a very tough place for UVU to play the last couple of seasons. Then with three home games closing out the regular season, New Mexico State, Texas Pan American, and Bakersfield. All right, well, I'm told that we now can throw it to our final break. Let's take a final break here at halftime. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. Graduate with a diploma and a resume. I don't think of myself as just an undergrad. Okay, so I'm a sophomore, but I'm at UVU where it's all about engaged learning. Leading a project on DNA research, I don't have to wait for grad school to get this kind of experience. As a UVU student, I guess you could say engaged learning is in my DNA.
Wolverines trailing Utah Valley. We're about set to start our second half here at the UCCU Center. If you missed it earlier at halftime, UVU just two and seven on the season when trailing at halftime. But Idaho, when leading at halftime, just five and four. In fact, they've, I alluded to it earlier, they've had some trouble holding on to leads. Three of their losses have come by one point, and in all three of those losses, they were leading by double digits at one point. I'm trying to find a silver lining here, yeah, Matt. You, you're, I'm struggling it, you here. Know, it's, hard to, it's hard to find it because, you know, the Wolverines go up to Idaho and come away with a win, and, you know, Idaho comes here tonight, and, and they're playing some really good basketball. And it's so different from what we saw Thursday night. Thursday night, the Wolverines did a pretty good job defensively, but they really struggled offensively. And tonight, it's just a complete opposite. You have them doing great offensively, and they're struggling defensively. So, yeah, thurs Thursday night, the Wolverines scored 57 points total. Had 24 yep. at halftime. Yep, yep, exactly. I mean, it's just been it's just been night and day. I think their their offense has been really good. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out is, you know, the Seattle game on Thursday night and tonight's game. These these guys have already played this year, right? I mean, they they're familiar. They they've seen the tape. They played against each other. They know what to expect. So I think you know I don't think the revenge factor plays uh, plays much into that, but. You, know, you make adjustments and you, you do things differently once you've already played a team and you know Idaho's made some good adjustments so has UVU and 20 more minutes of them to come. Both teams starting the same five second half they started the first half Madison is out there for Idaho with a pretty red right knee. Some sort of bandage on that as well. So much for my theory about the ankle right. Well could have been both. Zach Nelson first two for UVU. Yeah, a lot of really good motion there. You had Ben handling the ball outside, Keave handling the ball, Holton trying to get him some action, but great job of running their offensive sets. Hill misses a long two. Inside to Zach Nelson again, twisting, turning, shot going down. More points in the paint, Jim. You know, just keep pounding it inside. So so often we see the Wolverines come out in the second half, get that ball inside, and you get a you get a miss up top on the three. I like how the Wolverines have started here. Camera going up and over Ben Air. Here comes that one-two-two two type pressure. Just trying to slow the Wolverines down. And they fall back into 3 2, sometimes, you know, 1 2 2 zone, sometimes a 2 3, doing a lot of different things. Kayavi for three. Not there. Idaho pushing it up. Scott. Got it to go over the arch stretched arms of two Wolverines. Wolverines had drawn to within four that time before. Ben aired with the follow. Yeah, exactly. If, if they're going to pressure, just attack it. And Holton, that's not the not the first time Holton has just split an easy double team. Get the ball in the middle. You open up that defense. Mitch didn't convert the layup, but Ben's terrific job following it up. Whistle away from the ball. You know what that's all about. You, you get a moving screen there by Vera Sec. And the reason it's moving is because Keave Enos was hot on the tail of Connor Hill there trying to fight through and get through the screen. Because when you got a defender there, I mean, it's just a mindset. He knows he has to set a screen and attempts to do it at all costs. And, you know, credit Keave there for being right on the tail of Connor Hill causing the, the foul. Vera Sec's third foul puts him on the bench for Idaho. Wolverines down by six. Ben Aird off balance that time. Idaho got the numbers. Zach Nelson's got the rebound. Yeah, he'll bring this ball up. He'll be one to initiate the offense and push it. He can handle the ball for a big man. Yes, he can. Ben Aird getting a little contact from behind from Joe Kammerer. Camera being called for the foul. His second. And what you, you're going to see, I mean, obviously the Wolverines are going to keep trying to pound that ball inside, but 
And you hear Kimmerer there as he goes by saying that Ben flopped, but you know Ben's posting up. He's he's pinning the defenders behind him and getting some pretty good position. Alley oop. Mitch Brunel from Holton on Sager. Yeah, great execution. I, I didn't see who set the screen on the weak side guard, but that's a play I, I'm very familiar with. See it a lot from the Wolverines when they're playing teams who run a zone. Madison's three pointer won't go. Wolverines down by four. Down by two. Nice job. I mean, this is just, you're going to get a timeout here from Coach Berlin because Idaho's gone cold. You know, you have to believe that in these games, in these long minutes that these games are played in, teams are going to revert back to their average. And that's exactly what's happened to start. Granted, we're, you know, not even four minutes in, but those shots that Idaho is missing in the second half, they were making in the first half. So, you know, Connor Hill missed a shot. You just get the missed shot there from Steven Madison. They just haven't hit the shots in the second half that they hit in the first half, and the Wolverines have stayed hot. Wolverines start the second half on a 10 to 4 run. And Madison, during that timeout, went straight to the bench to sit down. He's standing back up. Now just out of the camera shot there. Yeah, but and you know I, it's. Yeah, I got to wonder if he's not hurt. Yeah, he, he looks a little hurt. I think you called it. I mean, he he did have some type of a very thin bandage around his right knee, and it did look red. So, you know, if if I'm guarding him, if I'm defending here, as you see the finish or the drive here from Holton, and a sky hook <laughs> fading away. What a finish from Holton! But you, know, you have to believe if you're guarding Madison, make him drive. You know, because if he's hurt or if he's limping in any way, he's going to want to. You know, do what he did on that last shot. He's not going to want to drive. He's going to want to shoot the three. So get up on him, make him try and drive it. And you know you're not sad to see him get hurt, but if he's out there playing and you know, trying to get him get him out of his element a little bit more. Hunsaker and Nelson with 14 each for Utah Valley. Madison still sitting at 20. It's what he had at halftime. Hill's got 14. Wiggs nine. Scott eight. Two points apiece for Dean Sack and Hammer. And Madison's on the, on the block. They're stretching that knee. That's the fourth and fifth time he's done that. So we can see that something's bothering him. Wolverine's down by two. Second shot clock. Wiggs shot blocked by Bruniel. Madison again, right place, right time, up and in. Yeah, pretty good initial defense there, you know, causing the, the difficult shot from Wiggs, but and just again, another weak side offensive rebound. Idaho gets another putback. Foul inside. Hunsaker hit the deck hard. That foul is going to go against Ty Egbert. It's going to be his third. Sec is already on the bench with three fouls for Idaho. Now Egbert will have three. Media timeout. Wolverines down by four. To the young ones. The small ones, the ones they had planned on leaving in their shadow. I know your determination, your heart, the need you have to prove something, the sweat, the miles, the hours that stretch into days and nights. because I've been there. And now, now is ours. The earth and the sky are ours. And this, this is where you belong. Join us. We're waiting for you. 
and so are they. Told you about UVU's next five games. Here's Idaho's next five. Northridge, Grand Canyon, Seattle, Chicago State, Kansas City. The Northridge game, a non-conference game coming up. Back to live action. Wolverines trailing by four. Make it just two now. Wow, how many charges is that that the Wolverines have taken in this game? I believe that's either the, I think that's the third charge that they've taken. But you know, in order to take that charge on a driving player, watch how Mitch moves his feet, doesn't get mixed up by any type of action outside, and you have to keep your body in front of the offensive player, and Mitch took that one right on the chest. Well done. Second foul against Wiggs. Wolverines looking to tie this thing up for the first time since it was two to two. And they do. Yeah, another great play because you get Zach Nelson the ball in some space against a guy that a defender that can't guard him and then has space. He has time. He reads what's there and he finishes. Okay, Avienis tracks down the loose ball. Wolverines can take their first lead of this game. Yep, that just going inside. Runeal. Even though it didn't work out how they initially planned it, love the play, trying to get it inside. Steven Madison saves that ball right into the hands of Mitch, and good things happen when you pound it inside. Second half, UVU has outscored him 16 to 6. Wiggs, reverse layup. Tie it again at 61 this time. Unsaker. Saved it. Nope, stepped on the baseline. I was going to say he saved it from going out of bounds, but he did not. Idaho basketball. Wolverines 8 of 10 shooting here in the second half. Idaho 4 of 9, and what a change. They've yep. not made a three-pointer 0 for 3 in the second half. Madison and one. One thing that I think Idaho does, you see the switch. Another switch there. Wow. Zach just a hair late, I guess, is what they called. You know, could have. Now, now, to me, that was more of a charge than what we've seen. Yeah, that was yeah. more of a charge than the last Bruniel yeah. charge. Yeah, and what, what we're seeing, again, Idaho, I think, sets more screens than your average team. So you have to have a lot of communication. you got to have a lot of talk between your defenders. And so many switches are taking place. You know, that time Kiavi gets switched off. He goes for the steal, which allows uh, Steven Madison to drive a little bit. But, again, a couple of mix-ups uh, from, from the defense. Double team. Leaves Holton Hunziker wide open for three. Can't get it to go. Kayavi will put up another three. Bottom. I don't know what Idaho was doing there. A loose ball on the floor. Look at this dive from Kayavi. What a play. Wiggs back the other way. Hey, we got a ball game going on, folks. Back and forth, they are going. Wow, you're not kidding. This no. is fun to watch. Great hustle play from Kayavi, but that gave him one extra, or excuse me, one less defender, and Idaho finishes there. But the intensity is clearly picked up. They're going to wave off the basket. That's going to be a technical foul on number one. No, they're not going to call a technical. Holton and Glenn Dean were having or exchanging words after that play. That foul is going to be called on Holton on the illegal on the illegal screen. Oh, 
Well, Holton and Dean are still uh, chatting it up yep. just a little bit. So the second or third foul against Holton Unsaker. Madison. Man, this kid's amazing. You know, and the Wolverines knew what play was coming. I mean, they called it out. They yelled it. They knew exactly what was coming. And Steven didn't quite make it all the way to basket, which I think was the intention. Pulls up for the jump shot. Madison's got 27 points. Review down by four. Contact on that drive. And Glenn Dean called for the foul. Here you go, Holton and, and Glenn Dean going after it, and that's the way you back up whatever talk you had is see it kind of an isolation play as Ben's going to be clearing out, and then Holton gets the drive. Glenn, did, Glenn Dean did not play in the first game up in Idaho. He was injured. Averages 10.5 points a game tonight. Dean with just two points. So quite a matchup between Glenn Dean and Holton Hunsaker. Zach's got some blood on him on his left elbow. Yep. Trainer Andrew Nelson will get to attend to a, that blood on Zach's elbow. So it's a official delay right now with 12 and a half minutes to play. Utah Valley down by four. Utah Let Valley has led once by two points. It's when it was 61-59. Well, heck of a battle tonight between these two. They won't see each other again unless it's in Las Vegas in the WAC tournament. Utah Valley, who gave up 32 points Thursday night to Seattle's Isaiah Yumapig has already given up 27 points tonight to Steven Madison. And he's not really a post-up player, Jim. He's yeah. not, you know, he's not really a back-to-the-basket player. He's what they really run is, you know, those trailing shots that he has into or off of transition, or they've run a lot of plays where they get him in isolations and get him in space, and that's where he he gets a lot of his baskets. UVU down by three. Jumper outside from Scott. Ben Aird pulls down his fourth rebound of the game. Inside to Nelson. Turn around off the glass. He, you know, you've got to go at Steven Madison. He's, you know, he's not the best defender from what we've seen. And you know, Zach made that play look very easy. Wolverines to within one with 11.45 left. Wiggs against Bruniel. Forces it up and in. You know, this game is really turned because Idaho has run so many isolation plays. Wolverines haven't really run that many isolations plays per se, but Idaho, that's what it is. They're getting their guys with a lot of room on the court, and UVU just hasn't been able to defend it. Idaho went for the steal, could not come up with it. Zach Nelson will shoot a couple free throws. He was fouled on the way to the hole that time by. Idaho's Glenn Dean. For Dean, that's going to be foul number three. Media timeout. Wolverines down by three. I had an idea. Lots of people have ideas. But engaged learning helped me develop my idea and make it real. And now with sales over a million dollars, Best assignment ever.
Don Verlin, the head coach, University of Idaho, originally from California. Led the Vandals for six years now. Three top three WAC finishes. Over 40 wins in the WAC. Doing a pretty good job up at Idaho. They're four and seven in the WAC right now. It's one interesting point, I, I think, and what I find, you know, we played uh, Seattle the other night, who was three and six in the WAC, and you look at how they played, and you wonder how in the world are they three and six in the WAC? And you come in yeah. tonight, and Idaho's four and seven in the WAC, and you wonder how in the heck are they four and seven in the WAC? Because, you know, Seattle comes in here and plays incredibly well, and Idaho comes in here and is playing really well. And well, is a situation that because Utah Valley was number one, that everybody is just UBU is seeing everybody's A game for sure. Yeah, definitely. And, and the two wins against the against Seattle and against Idaho were on the road too. It's just. It's amazing. It shows the ebbs and flow, the ebb and flow that you see during a season, because you know, some some teams play really well at the beginning and struggle late. Some teams play, you know, struggle at the beginning and play really well late. But that's what makes uh, that's what make con what makes conference play so great. UVU, despite the missed free throw, Holton for three, missed that one. That would have given UVU the lead again. Madison splits the D and scoring. Kid's a magician. Wow, and, and that was good initial defense there from Zach. He just let him split that and great attack from Hayes here. Garrity's just lightning fast with the basketball. Love watching him play. His dad had made the trip tonight. Spoke to him briefly before the game. Hayes with just five points here in this game. Wolverines down by four. You know, and the, the Wolverines to start the game had Mitch Bruneal on Stephen Madison. We'll see if they go back to Mitch or if they're going to stick with Zach guarding him because Stephen's kind of had his way with either player. See who they finish the game with. The lob inside to Madison. He's covered well. Has to kick it outside for the jumper. Wolverines with the rebound. Lob inside. Nelson. He's double teamed. He'll bring it out of there, give it over to Garrity. Halfway through the second half, Zach Nelson misses an easy driving layup. Ido comes back the other way. Madison stopped, thought about a three. Instead, gives it back over to Mike Scott. So Idaho suddenly wanting to burn clock. What's up? What's up? No, I don't think so. I, I just think Stephen Madison wasn't quite confident enough that he would be able to do anything. And that's great help defense there from Ben. I think they called the ball getting knocked off of Diggs's leg. Yeah, and nice job of Ben. But I think what really caused it was Hayes coming off of his man on the wing. With just that simple, easy swipe of the ball, didn't quite see if he got it, but he caused uh, caused some type of deflection. Three ball, bottom. Yeah, great play there. Kiave gets the ball, takes it. it. Looks like he's driving to the baseline. Madison. My goodness gracious. And the foul against Zach Nelson. Again, it'll be his second. You know, it's just that trailer play. You know, he he got the ball coming down off of the trailer, and I think uh, it one of the officials. They want to come over to the sideline and see that play. Let me go check it out. All right. Matt Peterson goes off headset. We'll run down to. Watch the play with the officials. That's fine. We're not going to show you the replay because uh, controversial replays can get a lot of people in trouble. But the officials are down to our left watching. 74-71 right now the score. Madison with 31 points. Stephen Madison averaging 18 points a game, number two score. Now Thursday night, UBU gave up 32 points to Isaiah Umapig. 
And Steven Madison coming out of this little delay here will be at the free throw line looking for his 30 second point. All right, Matt, what was it? Well, they were looking at they weren't looking anything with the basket with Madison. What they were looking at is before Madison even got the ball, Ben Aird hit the ground or fell on the ground and they were looking to see if there was anything intentional. But when we looked at the replay, the official said that was a flop and moved on. Steven Madison. Three of four from the free throw line. He's got 32 points. First time in years that UVU has given up back to back 32 point games to any players. Yuma Pig did it to him Thursday night. Steven Madison has done it to him tonight, and Madison's still got nine minutes to play. Idaho basketball. Yeah, unforced turnover, unforced error there. Colton too long of a pass there, needed to improve the angle just a little bit better. Seventh turnover against UVU. Yeah, they tried to run, they're trying to run an isolation play to get Madison the ball at the free throw line, but Zach with a really nice job of denial. Jumper outside. Nelson with a rebound for UVU. Inside to Ben, but a whistle. Going to go against Idaho. Yeah, really nice job of Ben running the, the, the lane, running the, the length of the court. He saw Zach get the rebound. He just went right down the middle of the court and posted up, and Kiave, good job of getting it into him on time. Virasek picks up his fourth foul, replaced immediately in the lineup by Ty Egbert. Ben aired at the free throw line. Big Ben seven points tonight, six rebounds. He'll have another one. Yeah, and every foul going forward that Idaho commits is going to result in free throws from the Wolverines. So, you know, they got, got to this point with the foul situation by being aggressive. Keep that up because... Idaho's shown that they're they're going to foul. Just a two-point lead for Idaho. Coming up on eight minutes left. Lob to Madison. <laughs> this kid cannot be stopped. 34 points. Didn't quite see what happened on the weak side there, but... How many times has a player scored his number when his number's 34? Tried to force it into Ben. Madison comes up with a turnover. Madison is such a deceptive kid. He doesn't look like he's going to overpower you. He just happens to be everywhere he needs to be. Wolverines down by four. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills. Dick Hunsaker in his 12th season here at UVU, 30-year coaching career. In fact, Dick Hunsaker has 381 career victories. Great West Conference Coach of the Year twice. And his wife, Diane, parents of four children, including starting point guard Holton Hunsaker, who, by the way, started his 119th consecutive straight game tonight. Nobody has started at point guard for the Wolverines for the last three-plus seasons. Coach Dick Hunsaker. Steven Madison's 
individual high this season has been 34 or excuse me 35 points. He got that against Montana. Right now Stephen Madison with 34 points. You know I, I think you know, it's pretty obvious so it probably goes without saying but you know the game's going to come down to can they defend him or not because you know he has been getting anything and everything in, in various ways so game is going to come down to can UVU defend him. Well he's just tied his season high. And checking on the career highs for these guys from Idaho. Stephen Madison. New career high. Or, yep 36 points. Breaks the 35 career high points he scored against Montana earlier this season. 79-73. Ben Ayer. Ben's into double figures with 11 points. Well, Rain's down by four. Yeah, one of the stronger moves we've seen him make just overpowered the defender. Dean for three. Ben Air with his seventh rebound. Yeah, and Holton pretty much just left Dean. I mean, left him wide open, knowing that Steven Madison was coming off of a double screen. So you, you got to let, got to make someone else beat you. Holton turnaround jumper. Wolverines down by just two. By the way, Holton Hunsaker's got 20 points of his own. Yeah. Zach Nelson, 19. Great game from Holton. He had four against Idaho at their place. Hill for three. In and out. Wolverines can take the lead with a three. Ninth turnover for UVU. Madison forcing it up, drawing contact from Holton Hunsaker. It's going to be his fourth foul. First Wolverine with four. Zach Nelson's got three. Brendan Evans on the bench with three. Here's the replay. Yeah, and Holton does a good job of staying straight up, but what the official called was he was lunging forward. He, he didn't stay in his or, or hold his ground, so to speak. He, he moved forward into Stephen Madison as he was shooting was the call. Well, somebody pulled some kryptonite out of their pocket. Stephen Madison misses a free throw. Poor guy stuck at 36 points in this game. Stephen Madison, 6'6", senior from Portland, Oregon. Missed them both. Okay, Avi Enos. Holton for three. Bottom. Wow, same exact play. They ran a few possessions earlier. Kiabi drives the baseline. Two big guys sending some picks for Holden to come off of. Well executed play and Holden with another clutch shot. UVU back out in front by one. Their biggest lead has been two. Inside, Suki Wiggs. Back and forth they go. Four ties in this game and four lead changes. Timeout on the floor. UVU down by one with 5.21 to play. This has been one heck of a Division I basketball game. Eight of 18 is what Idaho has hit from three point land. Meanwhile, UVU. 7 of 16, but Idaho hasn't made one here in the second half. They're 0 for 6, man, and, yep. and UVU is 3 of 6. Yeah, they're going closer to their average. You, you have to believe that that is kind of the, the norm and what usually happens in these games. You got to you go to your average, and you know Connor Hill started off hot. He hasn't made anything since I don't. He hasn't made a shot in the second half. 
I don't believe. Um, again, it's going to come down to can they guard Steven Madison? Can they defend him? Because if the Wolverines stay patient, they're going to get some great looks offensively. You know, which team which team is able to come up with multiple defensive stops is going to be key. Ben Ayer over to Nelson. Five minutes to play now. Scott with the rebound for Idaho. Camera trying to get it inside to Madison. Here again, isolation play on the elbow. Madison drives in, draws the foul. He'll shoot two free throws. Foul on Ben Aird, his third. Steven Madison. Kids really good. Yeah, good challenge there from Ben. I mean, that, that's a tough call to make. It, ben has momentum. Steven has momentum. There's a collision. But again, Jim, isolation plays in certain parts of the court. They tried to get him the ball inside when Kemmerer had it on the elbow. They tried to dump it in with a high low. Zach did a nice job of fighting that, but kind of the second option of the play was to get it out on the wing, or excuse me, get it on the uh, on the elbow for some some with some space for him to operate in. 38 points for Steven Madison. And he goes to the bench for a breather. He's put up 18 shots and only missed four. Yeah, he's got to the line 11 times, too. That's been huge. Yeah, eight of 11 from the free throw line. So the Wolverines find themselves down by three again. Whistle away from the ball. Hunsaker and Glenn Dean again. And the foul's going to go against Glenn Dean. His fourth. So now you got Dean and Sec both out there for Idaho with four fouls each. Hunsaker's out there with four. Nelson and Aird for UVU with three each. It was the eighth team foul against Idaho this half, so see a lot of free throws from Utah Valley. UVU's been called for six here in the second half. Hunsaker misses the front end. Won't get another. He's four of six from the strike. Wiggs on the drive, fouled by Keavi Enos. That's going to be free throws for Wiggs. You know, that play was designed initially to try and get Wiggs, you know, to drive if he had the opportunity, but then you see him with the drive, but you have Connor Hill coming off up top, trying to get a, coming off of a double screen to get a three-point attempt. Wolverines with the rebound on the missed free throw. Riggs a 66% free throw shooter, so nice job of blocking out. So important that you don't give up that second off opportunity off those missed free throws. Idaho's hit 13 of 19 free throws. Wolverines 11 of 18. Coming up on three and a half minutes left here at the UCCU Center. Wolverines down by three. Garrity on the drive. Whistle before he got to the basket against Idaho. That one's going to go against Suki Wiggs. That'll bring us to a timeout. Third personal foul against Wiggs. They say the devil is in the details. And in here, there are a lot of details. Flavor, color, texture, temperature, presentation. It all has to be flawless. Pressure? Maybe. But with Engage Learning, I get a lot of practice. And I'll bet your homework never tasted this good.
see the replay here. Uh, you know what I what I love to see from the Wolverines and would love to see in a couple possessions here coming down the stretch is Hayes Garrity getting space like that. You, know, you get the ball reversal. He has that entire side of the court for him to to operate. You know he can either pull up, he can drive. I love when when Hayes gets in space because I think he's terrific at creating his own shot. And if he doesn't get a shot off, or if he, and like just like on that last possession, if he gets fouled, he's going to the free throw line. He's shooting free throws. So I, I think it'd be be good to see Hayes get some get some opportunities in space like that. If you joined us late, Utah Valley trailed Idaho at halftime by eight points. Idaho just shot lights out in the first half, especially from three point land where they were eight of twelve. But in the second half, they've cooled off. O for six is Idaho. Meanwhile, the Wolverines, who hit four of ten three-pointers in the first half, have hit three out of six here in the second half. Yeah, I think offensively for Idaho, you, you got to concern yourself with three things. you got to concern yourself with Siku Wiggs getting the ball and, and driving. You have to concern yourself with isolation plays for Steven Madison, and you got to have an eye on Connor Hill coming off for, uh, for a three-point shot. That's Scott. exactly what you want to see. You want to see Scott take those shots. Close, but he didn't make it. Well, Scott's got 10 points tonight. He's into double figures, but Madison's the guy that's done the damage with 38 points. Wolverines looking to take the lead. See, here's an isolation play for Holton. It's exactly what you want. Holton is good at that. Hayes is good at that. It's exactly the point I was making. You know, let get the ball into your guard's hands in space, and they can create, and chances are they're going to score or they're going to get fouled. Foul against Mike Scott, his second. Holton making a quick move, using his body. Holton's a master at drawing. Yep, he is. Contact on his way to the hole. I would go right back to, to something like that, whether it be Holton again or Hayes again. Even Zach, we've seen him with with opportunities in space too. Fifth time this team, this game has been tied. Now UVU out in front after scoring the last four. Eighty four points the most UV has scored since December 20th by the way. Yeah, there you go. There's that Connor Hill with a long three point shot. Just what I was mentioned talking about what you have to be what you have to be aware of. Great defense there. Two and a half minutes left to play. Utah Valley leading by one. Same play for Holton here. For three. Yes. Exact same play. That's three times they've run that exact same play. Idaho hasn't figured it out. Keep running it. They can't defend it. Fensager's got 28 points. One shy of tying his season high. This is exactly what you want. Travel. Yep. Let Scott. Let him do everything that he wants to do because you're not giving the ball to Steven Madison. The four-point lead is UVU's biggest. Here's the replay of the travel, Matt. Yep. Nice job of Ben. You see, he doesn't go up for, we didn't see his feet there, but Ben did a nice job not going for that initial pump fake, staying on the ground. Going to see a lot of that big switching out on guards. You don't want to give anything easy up in the last two minutes, so we'll see that a lot from UVU. Under two minutes to play. Four point lead for the Wolverines now. Madison's got the ball in his hands with 38 points under his belt. Yeah, you got to give help. Yeah, Holton's got to come over. When his man is at half court as he is, he's got to give help to Steven Madison or to Ben Aaron, who was guarding Steven at that point. Madison for three. That's off. Idaho controls the rebound. Madison on the drive. <sighs> Steven Madison, 40 points tonight. And the Wolverines lead is only two with a minute 23 to play. Oh. I've, I've never seen back-to-back -back games with two more dominant players than yeah. 
Madison tonight and Yuma Pig on Thursday. Yeah, e exactly. And, you know, what really killed the Wolverines there is they gave up the offensive rebound. You know, you had four guys in there. One of the keys of the game was you got to rebound from all positions. When you only have one defender, or excuse me, one offensive player inside, as Sec was, I believe it was Sec that was in there that came up with the rebound, you got to have everybody down there rebounding because then you're in scramble mode and so much room for, for Madison to operate. But you're right, Jim. I mean, it's been all about two guys, right? I said several minutes ago it was going to come down to how well the, the Wolverines can do with defending Steven Madison. I think the same can be said for Idaho. You know, how well are they going to be able to defend Holton? Because Holton really has stepped up and taken over this game offensively. 28 points total at halftime. Huntsaker had 12 points. So he's got 16 here in the second half. Oh, by the way, Zach Nelson shipped in 19 points. Yeah. Ben Aird 11, Kayavi Enos 9, Hayes Garrity 7, and Mitch Bruniel 8. Yeah, we haven't talked about Zach. He's, I mean, he's scored 19 and done it very efficiently. What he's really done, you know, done his best is guarding Stephen Madison for well, most of the second half here. So, minute 23, a two-point lead. I think. I don't think we're going to get any type of, well, maybe a little bit of extended court pressure here from Idaho, but you know, look for UVU to go go inside to Ben or some type of play involving Ben and Holton in a one-on-one -on -one pick and roll type play. We've got Dean guarding Hunsaker. Both of those guys with four fouls each. Minute 10 to play. Now just be patient. Got plenty of time. Oh, they're going to get Seku with a hold. Vera Sek. Excuse me, not Seku, Sek. That's number five on Vera Sek. He's fouled out with two points tonight, four rebounds. Zach Nelson will be at the free throw line. Wolverines here in the second half are 8 of 11. You know, shows you how much I know. I, I thought they were going to go you know, some type of pick and roll play with with Ben. But you see, Zach goes over to set the screen. And Sec thinks that the screen is going to be set. But what Zach does is just slips it. You know, a great on-time pass from Keave. And behind, Sec was holding. So great deception type play there because the defenders think, oh, Zach's going to go set a screen for, for Keave. But he slips, he slips that screen and... Gets to the line. No game in the whack is safe. Zach Nelson. Three point lead for the Wolverines. Yeah, and make or miss here on defense. You know, again, keys to the game rebounding from all positions. They have to have that. Every single player. No, no Wolverine needs to be leaking out everybody back rebounding. One minute to play. Madison. Again. 42 points for Steven Madison. Wow. Wolverines lead is just two with under a minute to play. Jumper, Hunsaker. Idaho can tie it with a two, lead with a three. Shot clock is off. They can play for the last shot if they wanted. Yeah, you're going to get Steven Madison holding Hunsaker, guarding him. Ben's going to come over and double team. Love this. Get it out of his hands. Make someone else do it. Wiggs cannot get it to go, but he'll shoot a couple free throws. Clock stop 13.9 seconds left. Again, Wiggs, 66% on the season. Wiggs tonight, one of three from the foul line. Yeah, he's, he's going to get two, so I think you're going to get a timeout from Coach Hunsaker first. Suki Wiggs, a freshman from Seattle. You got to wonder if a freshman so far this season has been in this situation before. Yeah, this is a pressure situation if there ever ever was one. One timeout remaining for Idaho, two remaining for Utah Valley. Here's yeah, the you, replay. You see, I, I love that. Ben, you, you know, you, you got to make someone else other than Steven Madison beat you at this point. So Holton is, po uh, Holton is fronting. Ben comes over to help. 
you know, that ball gets reversed into Wiggs' hands. You know, good job of Kayavi, you know, doing his best, but foul was on Kayavi yep. Enos, his second. You know, a couple things here too, Jim. So he's going to get two free throws. So obviously the first you're relaxing, but on the second you've got a lot of scenarios in play because he could miss it. If he misses it, you, you have to have your best effort on on blockouts of the night. You got to have everybody in there. But if you if you get that ball, you got to be aware that Idaho is going to foul because 13, you know, 14 seconds left. So. If he, if he misses it, hold that ball, know you're going to get fouled. If he makes the second one, take your time, get yourself set on the out-of-bounds play on the underneath uh, underneath the basket. Suki Wiggs. It's a one-point game. Wiggs will have another one. Fouled in the act of shooting. Wiggs now 16 points. Long. Madison pulls down the rebound for Idaho. They can win it with a basket. Straight up. Dean. That's long. Ball outside. Hill. Game over. Wow. Wow. You gotta be kidding me. Wow, what a finish. That was unbelievable. Idaho had every sh chance in the world to win that thing. Eighty-nine, eighty-eight. Wolverines win it to remain in first place in the WAC. They're now nine and two. Idaho in the WAC, four and eight. What a ball game here at the UCCU Center. Wolverines now. Yeah, there's Utah Valley nine and two. What an end to this game. You get the offensive rebound. You get Dean with the shot that was long. Another chance. This one, luckily for the Wolverines, too far out. Desperation shot and blocking out to end it. What a rebound. What a finish. Wow, what an effort. I mean, both teams, you know, all night long, back and forth. Wow. Neither giving an inch. How fitting that it was a one-point uh, one win. And the chances that Idaho got. Wow. Holton, How exciting. Holton Unsaker, 28 points. Zach Nelson, 21. Ben Air, double double. 11 points, 12 rebounds. 8 points, Bruneal. 9 points, Kayavi Enos. 7, Hayes Garrity. 5, Brendan Evans. 42 points, though, for Idaho's Stephen Madison. Hill with 14. Scott with 10. Wiggs with 16. Utah Valley wins it. Wow. 89. 88. You know, that, that finish was, wow. I, I am so impressed with how the Wolverines battled and fought. Both teams fought, but the Wolverines were kind of behind the eight ball all night long. Idaho had their chances. I mean, they had they had the free throws to tie it. They had two additional shots. Wow, what what a game. And you know, what a momentum builder for the Wolverines. No you know, kidding. struggling against Seattle on Thursday night. Down in this game, they have an opponent go for 42 points. I mean, it's just it's spectacular. I love seeing it. Love being here and being a part of it because what a what an outstanding game. Only one team has scored more points against UVU this season. That was Oklahoma State with Marcus Smart in the third game of the year when they got 93. Tonight, Idaho gets 88, but it's not quite enough as UVU wins at 89-88. Wolverines hit the road two games next week. Uh, I'll be there doing the radio. The, you don't get to go on that trip, Matt. I'm so sorry. Yes. So uh, our next home game, next TV game, will be uh, the following week with New Mexico State in here on Thursday night. 
And what a battle we expect out of that one. Yeah, and Wolverines going on the road, two very winnable games, yeah. you know, and, and finishing out the season with three straight games. But you, you, you forget about what's ahead if you can't take care of what's in front of you, and, and the Wolverines did that. What a spectacular win, and very excited. Best home game of the year, I think. Oh, well, one of the best games, uh, you know, I've seen since I've been around here. That was a fantastic game. Players making shots from both ends of the court. Holton with some incredible shots. Zach played well. Ben played great. Steven Madison was out of this world. And, you know, what else could you ask for as a fan? You know, coming down to the buzzer, and if you're a Wolverine fan, the way you want to see it end. Wolverines still in first place in the WAC with five games left in the regular season. Hey, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for being with us. This telecast was produced by students from UVU's digital media department and is a copyrighted production of the Wolverine Sports Network. For Matt Peterson, Jim McCullough, good night from Orem, Utah.